So guys, let's have a quick look at what we actually get in the box when we get an infrared IRC valve from Systemizer. You might remember Systemizer from the combi mates that they make that are really good when it comes to protecting your boiler from lime scale. You also may have come across as well the excellent hydraulic valve that they make for your urinals and they also make one for low pressure as well. See the IRC valve and that's how I'm gonna to refer to it for the rest of the video as an upgrade for all of that. So what we're going to do now is have a look inside the box at the main components you get when you buy an IRC valve from Systemizer. This is the Systemizer IRC control. It comes in two parts, the actual main control sensor unit that we've got in front of us here and the mounting bracket. See, this is the backing box that you put in the wall. So the great thing is, is that we've got dual power supply so you can pop the front off like so and you can have four AA batteries in here or if we remove this small cover at the back here, we can supply it from the mains as well. We can remove these tabs here if we want our actual sensor to be pipe mounted because we have a few different ways of being able to mount the sensor. We can mount it on the pipe directly. We can have the sensor remotely installed in the ceiling or we can have the sensor remotely installed in the wall. Also, another thing you might have noticed that there's quite an unusual body shape to this. Well, this is what I love more than anything else. We've actually got the template for our cutout just here. So later on, when we're actually gonna be installing this, we'll be able to use this as a draw around cutout and get this installed properly and it's gonna look absolutely wicked. Now, if we have a look at the actual main valve body itself, we've got a standard solenoid valve here. Now, if we're installing this directly on the pipe, we'd remove those two tabs, and then we'll push the solenoid straight onto the back into this black tab here. And then if I just get two random pieces of pipe, these aren't supplied, that's what you're gonna see once you've popped the cover on, you've got your power on, that's what you're gonna see if it's pipe mounted. So you can see it's very, very simple to get pipe mounted on there like that. We are gonna be installing that like that for this video. So if we're gonna have one of these remotely installed, what we need to do is get our connecting block just here. It's numbered one and two. If you read in the back of the actual unit itself, it says number one and two. I recommend you use standard one millimeter twin and earth for this, and then you can install your valve remotely away from where your sensor is. This is particularly handy if you're installing this in a wall or in the ceiling. All of this is held together nice and neatly and also made watertight with a small rubber gasket and a screw that goes all the way through and screws it onto here, making sure that it can't be pulled off or it can't fall off by accident once it's been installed. Another thing to note is that on the bottom of the valve, we've got a small slotted screw here. We're gonna be using that later on to adjust the flow rate for when this valve is open. So you're gonna to need to know about that when it comes to commissioning this at the end of the job. So the main reason you're going to be installing the IRC valve is because number one, you want to save water. And these can save water consumption by up to 80%. That's loads. Think about how much money you're gonna be saving there. Also, because it's a modern kind of design, um, especially if you have it wall mounted or ceiling mounted, it will be flush with the ceiling, which means if it is in a pub or in a place where people like to tamper with things, it's a lot more out of the way and they're much more less likely to do that. So one thing I really like about the actual IRC valve itself is its actual shape. It's really, really handy because we can get this very, very close to the wall. So if we've got standard pipe work that's coming across like so, we can pop that. This can go really, really close to the wall, as you can see, just like so. Now the water supply direction is denoted by an arrow on the brass valve, but what if the water supply is going the other way? Well, they've thought about that as well. Obviously, if we were gonna turn the valve round, this would not stick to the wall so well, but the great thing is, is all we need to do is take this circlip off here, then we can lift up our solenoid valve head, flip it round, pop it back on, pop the circlip back on, and yet again, we're flushed back to the wall again. Saving space and just making the job a little bit neater. It means that all our pipe work can be supported on clips properly. And also it means it's less likely we're gonna have any problems with the pipe work in the future. So what I'm gonna do now is the actual fun bit. I'm actually gonna prepare the studio and turn it into a little pub so I can get my mates over. We're gonna install one of these on one of the urinal feeds and we're gonna have another urinal that's just a standard drip feed, like I said earlier. So let's get started with that and you can see us do that in quick time.
So guys, while I'm building this pub for my mates, maybe it's a good idea we have a quick look at actually how the IRC valve works. When the IRC detects movement in the washroom, it will open the normally closed sensor and water will then flow into the system. After this, the power to the sensor is switched off. Now remember we've got our regulating valve on the actual body of the IRC valve and I'll be showing you how to commission and use that later on in the video. After 25 minutes, power is restored to the sensor and as long as no one goes in the toilet in the next five minutes, it will send another pulse to the valve, shutting it off. If the sensor detects no occupancy for 12 hours, it will automatically open up the valve for 30 minutes, enabling there to be a rinsing flush. This sequence is designed to maximize battery life, guys, so you should get about three years of battery life from a decent set of batteries. Also, there's a different valve seat set if you've got a low water pressure situation. So you've probably got the idea already, guys. We're making a little manifold up here. I'm just going to give this a little bit of a, a soldering debout bar now. Uh, this shouldn't take too long. Guys, this is the bit I love, a little bit of inventing, getting a couple of water meters and actually proving to you guys, hopefully, that this product actually does work and that it's really wicked. Look, that goes up lovely, no squeaking. Oh, it just goes up soft, real soft. That's gonna be it, that's all we need on that. So guys, we've got our main manifold now built up and ready. Let's have a quick chat about what's going on. So we've got our cold water main coming in here. Obviously we're teeing off into two individual water meters just here. Then we've got the fill valve that's kind of on the old type, okay? And that's where you sort of leave that valve just open a little bit so water can trickle through, slowly fill the system up, and then every so often, according to the siphon unit, do a flush. Then we've got our systemizer IRC on here that we're gonna use to control our other urine and then with any luck, after I've been running my studio as a pub for a night, we're gonna be able to read these and see the difference. So I spent a few hours hanging up our lovely ideal standard urinals and getting them all piped up. And then I sighted up our manifold and got prepared to do all the piping up and finishing off. Now the reason I put this around here as well is so drunk people don't play around with the manifold. I don't want it on that side. All they see is the cistern and the spout coming out of the urinal and that's it. They don't have to worry about anything else. They can't play with anything. They can't touch anything. It's just like back to the future. Marty! Anyway. <laughs> I'm now going to pipe our cold feed up into the bottom and then get our two feeds off over to our feed pipes into the top of the cisterns. But you guys aren't going to watch that, it's going to happen in two seconds. Boom! I think it was at about this point that I actually really started to get excited about doing this. I got everything sorted out, I got the urinals in, I got our flushes in and everything like that. We got the IRC actually fitted, now I could talk about commissioning and opening my pub. Come inside my lovely urinal. Next door's urinal has got the standard drip type that I was talking about, where you open up the valve a little bit and it just drips into the cistern and the automatic siphon will just automatically flush every time it gets up to a certain level. This urinal here is gonna be controlled by our lovely new IRC. The great thing about the IRC valve is its versatility. We can have it hung on the ceiling, we can have it wall mounted like we said, we can have it flush installed in the cavity, we can have it flush installed in the ceiling, it's absolutely brilliant. What we're gonna do, because our control valve is just through there, I'm gonna hang up my IRC, probably gonna put it just here, or I might put it just there, one of the two, but then we've got everything in the same place. And it also means I've got a very small amount of wire to lead back to my control valve. You can use one millimeter cable for a maximum of 10 meters. That means I can have it as far away as all of this cable if I want to. So guys, really, really simple now. It's quite an easy job. I know that at nine inches over, I've got the start of a beam just running up here. So I wanna keep my IRC in this area here. So I think I'm gonna keep it reasonably high. So if we go for a center, up there. Now I know exactly where I want my mounting plate. Oh, this is seriously cool. You can draw around it like so, if you like. Make sure as well that you've got a spirit level on here. Just make sure you've got that level. Pop these holes through now, and then draw the centers of the holes with your pencil on there like that. Then we can get our hole saw ready, and then we can get drilling. This sort of thing is never really commented on when you do like product reviews or anything like that, but the instructions you get with the IRC are absolutely wicked. They even tell you the diameter of the holes you need to use to drill to get that perfect radius. Look how easily the back plate goes in as well and gets clipped into the cavity. As soon as we've got that installed, we can feed the actual solenoid valve through the hole and actually get the main body of the sensor installed.
So then guys, back round here, you can see we've got our solenoid here, we've got the actual valve on here like so. All we now need to do, pop this on here like that, nip this up, that is then installed. Now we can get our last battery popped in and we can get the water turned on and I can give you a few little tips and tricks about commissioning this so it works properly for you. I guess it's obvious guys, but just make sure you've got clean fingers when you put the front cover on. It's like just one of those things. Once the water is switched on, hold down the button to test the solenoid and make sure it's working. You'll hear the IRC open and close the solenoid a few times to make sure that it's working all right, and then it'll be operational. After that guys, just wanna make sure that it can see us. So there we go. So there we go, now we know that it can sense us coming in and out of the urinal as well, and it will start to let water through. After about a minute of doing this test, it's commissioned and it's set up. Then what we can do is deliberately trigger the fill valve and then we move on to the very last bit of commissioning and that is actually what fill rate we want to attain. Once you've got the water on and you've checked for leaks and everything's okay, which it obviously was in this case, use this simple table below to adjust the system to flush once every 30 minutes if it's been activated. So if you've got a four and a half litre system, it's gonna take 40 seconds to fill up 100 mil. There's also a normal and an economy mode for your use. Refer to the instructions to learn how to set it up. So guys, there we go. We've installed our urinals, we've installed our cisterns, we've put our systemizer on this urinal here, we've got our standard drip fill on this urinal here. What all I need to do now is make sure that both our water meters are set exactly the same. So let's prove that this beast does what it does. We know it's easy to fit, we know it's easy to set up. Let's see if it does actually save water in a public environment. Let's get on with it. Turn in my studio into a pub. Oh my God. <sighs> Hi guys, so our experiment is ready. We're gonna find out which is better to fill up your urinal systems. Look at that as well. We've got 300 and 300 there. Let's get it on. Right, there's our trickle started. And now we'll switch on the valve to our IRC. And there we go, we're off, running. <laughs> Right then, so the first of our delinquents are here. <laughs> so as I mentioned earlier, I wanted to really test the claims that Systemizer have as to whether this is going to save water. Right, everybody, come over here. We're going to get our uh, ringmaster. Don't, 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 come. The only way I could do that was to get my mates over, convert the place into a pub, and basically get them so they weed quite a lot and test the urinals under real conditions. So we divided our mates into two teams with two team captains. So Nod is the captain of team one, and Miggy is the captain of team two. Oh. Tom, Tom, so Tom's, Tom's, uh, Dane, I'll take you, you can't have got any bloody fluid left in you. Dane's on team no. two. <laughs> they were informed that they had to use the exact urinals that correlated to their team. Dane. Toilet number one is this toilet here. Toilet number two is this toilet here. Yeah. Literally, don't use the toilet that isn't assigned to your number. If you do, you'll be thrown out and murdered. See if you don't, see if you don't. And that was it, all they had to do was drink, play games that we'd set up for them, and basically watch TV and have a bit of fun over the next four to eight hours. Yeah! It's the day after. I may sound fresh and perky, but believe me, I felt better. I knew that the experiment was going well while we were here because I just popped in, I popped around the back to have a look and see how everything was going. I've got the water off now. What I did, I just left the system running overnight, just like uh, any sort of owner of a pub or a public place would do. I don't think you really find them going around turning the water off at night to save money. But if you do, then really, really good. But we're doing this on a kind of real world test. And this is what I found. The readings on these are in meters is cubed. So what we're talking about is if you imagine a meter cubed of water. So the IRC valve here used 0.582 of a cubic meter. So just over half of a cubic meter in 24 hours. Get this guys. The drip type, okay, which is running at literally exactly the same flow rate and everything as the other one, was running at 1.483. So in 24 hours, it's used nearly a whole cubic meter more. So we've saved a whole cubic meter almost in 24 hours using the IRC valve. 
Now, I've got to say, when I set up this experiment, it was one of them ones I was a bit worried about because I didn't really know whether it was going to work. And it was really good that my mates helped us do it. I was so pleased that they'd all sort of come along. Seriously, try to get 10 of your mates together to meet you on an industrial estate, right, in the middle of nowhere on Saturday night. Believe me, it's not easy. So thanks, guys, for helping us out there. You did get loads of free booze and we did have a really good night. So look, guys, this video, hopefully, has told you how the IRC works, how you install it, the features that you'll get in the box. Think about some of the product reviews we've done over the last few weeks where we've actually put them to the test. I'm not here to say, you know, one's better than the other. I'm just here to present the evidence to you. And the evidence here so far says that this has saved us 0.9 of a cubic meter, nearly a whole cubic meter in 24 hours. So I contacted System 